here's why Abdullah and I are not friends. It's because he's always rubbing in my face how when he says he's 29, it's because he's actually 29. Um, also, uh, I asked like five times, I asked Fadwa if I was supposed to speak tonight. She said, no, you can just eat, no problem. So thanks, Fadwa. Anyway, um, I just want to say congratulations uh, to the Arab American News and for 35 incredible years. You know, um, I think it's true when they say that democracies die in darkness. And um, the Arab American News has been there for all of these years, all these many decades, to shed light on not just what's happening in the Arab American community, but what's happening all around our state and all around our nation. And it is an incredibly necessary and important voice. Uh, and I, I want to say thank you personally, of course, for um, endorsing my candidacy, which I think was very critical. Uh, I am still waiting to hear from Nolan Finley. I think any minute now, he's going to get on board. Um, but I, uh, I'm so grateful for that, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to do everything that I can in my capacity as Michigan Attorney General to lift up communities like the Arab American community and like so many other communities um, who really have not had proper representation in this state for such a long time, maybe ever. And we want to make certain that that is no longer the case. And I, I just want to give a, a shout out to uh, some of my staff that is here today. Uh, Sunita Dadamani is here and she is the new head of our hate crimes unit. Also um, brought a lady by the name of Fadwa Hamoud. None of you probably know her, but you should meet her at some point. She's kind of fabulous. She's my Solicitor General. And uh, earlier, uh, somebody threw a shrimp at my head. I'm pretty sure it was Kim Worthy for me taking Fadwa from her. She's still not over it, but eventually I think she'll get there. But anyway, uh, so grateful to all the great work that o Osama does and everyone on staff at the Arab American News, and congratulations to everybody. And uh, I'm still waiting to see if Senator Peters has the Mueller report. Maybe he can slip it to me later. Do you, Congresswoman Dingell? Nobody has it? All right. And when they said they, that it first goes to the Attorney General, I was kind of hoping that that would include State Attorneys General, but apparently not. I'll keep waiting, but soon. All right. In the New York Times, right. Anyway, congratulations. Um, and um, let's hope for another 35 more years of incredible news, if not much more. Thanks, everybody. Next, we will hear from an individual, uh, really a family that has been tirelessly advocating for not only our community, the greater Dearborn community, but the greater 12th for nearly a century. This is a family, this is an individual who we all know as Debbie, who we all think of uh, as one of our own. And so please help me welcoming our Congresswoman, our advocate, our fighter, uh, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell. Thank you, Abdullah. You know, yesterday was his birthday, too, so we need to say happy birthday to him, too. He is 29 now, Dana. And Dana, like you, I was told five times, And you have been so good to me and to him. And he loved every one of you. And he is watching down tonight and making sure that you all know. So I wouldn't have gotten through the last few weeks without the people in this room. And you're still going to have to give me a lot of support. But Assam, you. We, I love you. I, w I want you to think about the history of the last 35 years and the stories that we have to tell. And tonight is the story of freedom of the press and freedom of speech, which are two of the most fundamental pillars of our Constitution.
true. And that we have fair and balanced reporting and that we see all sides of the story. So I can think of a lot of interesting moments over the years. I, don't, I can remember Senator Hagel with this whole group. Remember that night? And I can think of John Sununu with this group. And um, I mean, so I'll stop telling stories. But uh, Osama, I do love you, and you've met, and I have, I spoke about you. Here is a congressional record insert to celebrate these 35 years. But never has what the Arab American news is doing right now been more important. And we have to make sure that every story is fair and balanced and that we speak up for freedom and that we speak out to make sure that everybody knows what the true story is. Osama, thank you for always being there. We're going to have to take the picture of <laughs> Our next speaker, I can honestly say that when he announced his candidacy for public office, it made my life uh, a whole lot more difficult. There was only the Arab American community that knew the difference between Abdul Rahman and Abdullah. Until this day, people often still confuse me as the guy who ran for governor. Fortunately for me, that is a, that's moving me up in the ranks. This is an individual who I have the privilege of calling my brother, who has elevated the Arab American community along the national spectrum and who continues to make us proud till today, and we can't wait to see what he does tomorrow. Please help me in welcoming Dr. Abdurrahman Al-Sayed. So I'll tell you that, uh, that Abdullah both looks better in a suit, uh, generally a kinder and, um, and more loving human being, and actually won his election. So, you know, uh, I'd be glad to be the Abdullah, not the Abdul. Um, it is a privilege and an honor to be with you tonight. I want to say a special thank you to uh, Osama and the whole team at the Arab American News for continuing to tell our story. Now for context, I don't have to remind you what happened in New Zealand just seven days ago. Men walked into a place of worship, multiple places of worship, and gun down innocent children, women, and men simply for how they prayed. They were terrorists, and we should call them that. They operated on an ideology that said that some people are better than other people. In that moment, we watched the international community take a collective breath, and we also saw a stunning example of what it means to lead in moments like that from New Zealand's Prime Minister, Jacinda Ardern. I want us to think about, though, all the work that goes into that kind of leadership. That doesn't just happen. That kind of leadership in moments like that happens because there are people on the ground telling the story and reminding us how we ought to be thinking when tragedy strikes. It doesn't just happen. It's created. Leaders stand at the tips of icebergs. And those icebergs, they're built by institutions, and they're institutions like this one. Many of us struggled in this moment from Arab American, South Asian, African American, Muslim communities. How do we even deal with the staggering death toll that we saw? And we have a fundamental question, and it's quite simple. In moments like this, do we step back or do we step forward? Do we recede into the background, or do we stand up into the foreground? And I think the answer is quite obvious. But to do that, institutions like this that tell our story, expand our narrative, share our experience, have never been more important than they are today. 
And so I am proud and thankful of this institution. It is an institution that is part of the lifeblood of the Arab American community. It tells our story, reminds us who we are, and empowers us to step into the foreground when we are called to do so. And I'm profoundly thankful for the work that the Arab American News did around covering my race, around covering the state of Arab American engagement in politics, and I look forward to many, many more years of their doing that. Osama, you ought to be very proud of what you've done to the entire team. Thank you for the work that you do, and I look forward to walking for another 35 years in that direction. Thank you so much. Elected in 2014, U.S. Senator Gary Peters is proud to represent the state of Michigan. He currently serves as a ranking member of the Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee, where he works to promote the safety and security of Michigan's diverse communities. Gary has led efforts to ensure communities have the resources they need to safeguard against threats ranging from natural disasters to targeted attacks, including pushing for grants to He is also focused on protecting our critical infrastructure and information systems and supporting our first responders. He also serves in the Senate Armed Services, Commerce, Science and Transportation, and Joint Economic Committees. Gary has lived his entire life in Michigan, and he and his wife, Colleen, have three children. Please help me in welcoming our U.S. Senator, Gary Peters. Well, thank you, Representative Hamoud, and uh, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your leadership, and I know uh, much has been said about his 29 years of uh, age, uh, but, you know, we're, we're in Detroit. This is the car business. Uh, it's not the years. It's the mileage uh, that matters, and, and I know you have a lot of mileage as a progressive advocate and a champion. Thank you for your leadership in this community and for the state of Michigan. It's truly outstanding, uh, and we're expecting big things from you. It is, uh, it is wonderful to, to be here to honor 35 years of the Arab American uh, newspaper. And the, the reason uh, that I'm so attached to this paper, and of course, Osama's leadership and everybody in the organization, is that this paper, as, was, as Abdul mentioned, and Attorney General Nestle mentioned, that this paper is not just about the news, it's about social activism. It's about standing up for folks who don't have a voice. It's about standing up for folks who need to see justice uh, in their life. From the stories you've written about the mental health and how that can be stigmatized and the long series that you did to bring folks out of the shadows so that they can get the help that they need, to the ability to make sure that community policing was working in a way that actually brought in the community and worked with the community as opposed to against it and standing up against attacks to the Muslim American, Arab American community all across the, the globe. I think there's no question that this newspaper has the heart and soul of the Arab American community here in the greater Detroit area within its very soul. And I know that the, the hearts and minds of this community, as Abdul mentioned very clearly, are still hurting and are still breaking from the heinous evil that we saw in New Zealand. It is truly an act of terrorism. There's no question about it. But it is more than just an act of terrorism. It was an act against the very freedom of religion that we cherish so deeply in this country. This is a very troubling time for our country where there are individuals out there that try to foster hate and division play on people's fears in order to further their agenda. We have to stand up against that, we have to condemn those actions, and we must take action against them in every opportunity that we have. And, and let's be clear, when we're looking at actions here in the United States, and we've unfortunately seen horrible incidents here, from the Tree of Life synagogue to churches and Charlottesville, or in Charleston, and protests in Charlottesville, we've seen too many acts of violence and of terrorism in our country. But let's call it for what it is and who is actually behind it. In fact, the Anti-Defamation League has shown in 2018, 78%, 78% of all of these attacks were done by white supremacists. 
white supremacist in that ideology of hate and division. It cannot be tolerated in this country, and we need to have a government that stands up against white supremacist action and understands that it will never be okay, it will never be tolerated, and it is evil. And in order to push forward on that, I'm going to be working as a member of the Armed Services Committee. I'm now the ranking member, and we're going to be holding hearings. And we're going to find out exactly why the Office of Terrorism Prevention, set up at the Department of Homeland Security to prevent us from terrorist acts, why are they not looking into white supremacist action? Why are they not investigating? Why are they not asking questions? Why are they not bringing people to justice before these tragedies occur? And only then, only then will we actually be in a position where we can worship freely and know that we can go to our house of worship and be there safe. Unfortunately, that's still down the road and we need to make sure resources are put in to protect organizations. We're going to be having hearings soon to look at current funding programs so that we can make sure that there is more money available to mosques and synagogues and churches across this country to make the kinds of protections that they need, as sad as that is that we need to do it. But we're going to provide additional resources and have certainty for that to move forward. But the other issue that I've heard loud and clear, and Osama and so many in this community have talked to me about, is another issue of civil justice and civil rights. And that deals with what happens when too many of you try to board airplanes and find that when you go to the airport, you often have to spend a whole lot extra time to do that. That you get pulled aside. Folks who are wonderful people in our community and established folks know that you always are going to have additional scrutiny. And part of that is a watch list that exists. A watch list where you don't know how you get on, and worst of all, you don't know how you can ever get off the list. Well, that is simply unacceptable. In America, you have access to due process. If someone puts you on a list, you can get off of that list, and you shouldn't have to jump through hurdle after hurdle after hurdle in order to do that. And that's exactly what is happening. In a recent meeting, I had a gentleman tell me that his nine-year-old son is on the watch list. Ladies and gentlemen, that's crazy. We can never be in a situation where that happens and that young man should be able to be off the list. He should have never gotten on the list to begin with. So we're going to be having an excellent time. We called and worked on a bipartisan basis with the chair of the Millennium Scholars and we've had a meeting with our staff and classified people and we're going to try to get this done as soon as possible. We're going to be asking the House and the Republicans to be able to see her and engage the Senate in justice. We are going to do a deep dive and find out what's going on. We've got to bring people together. We cannot let people divide us any longer. And the only way we get this thing done is if we bring folks in both parties together and push it and make sure that this is what is done. So I look forward to working with you, but in order for me to make this a reality, I also need to hear your stories. I've heard so many stories about incidents that you've had in airports and other places. But I would encourage you to contact my office, contact Zaina from my office and others. Tell me your story so I can bring those stories to Secretary Nielsen at DHS as I brought her the story of the nine-year-old and others. She told me and she's said that she will work on it. I said, that's fine, but actions are more important than words. We're going to see what she does, but I need to hear your stories. I need to work with you. So thank you. Thank you uh, for your activism and for this incredible paper. Thank you for 35 years in Osama. I would also would like to present you also a record statement from the United States Senate to permanently recognize uh, 35 years of outstanding service.
that she has been bold enough to stand on the side of truth, regardless of whether that had a political cost. And this is an individual who also knows how to identify talent and advice. And she is also strong enough of a leader to keep pushing that talent on their path and just let them flow. Please help me in welcoming our Wayne County Prosecutor, Kim Wayne. I love my relationship with the staff and everybody that works at the Arab American News. When I first became involved with this community, the paper was turning 18 years old, and here we are at 35. The most thing I love about the paper, more than anything else, is Osama Sablabe and his staff is not afraid to speak truth to power. It doesn't matter how powerful the person is. It doesn't matter how powerful the nemesis is. It doesn't matter how powerful the friend is. They will tell the truth no matter how unpopular that truth may be. And not everybody will do that. And not everybody in every news outlet will do that as well. So thank you so much for all of your support. Continue to do and speak truth to power. Continue to celebrate. And I too hope I'm here 35 years from now to celebrate your 70th. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. So in no particular order, I'm going to try to get through the sign-in sheet of elected officials. Let me just tell you, many of you need to work on your handwriting. Um, again, in no particular order. I thought my handwriting was bad, but this is, this is something else. I grew up in a bilingual household. Some of you don't have excuses. Uh, Marie Mbeze, Judge, 13 District Court, 3rd District Court. <laughs> yeah, 30. Gene Hunt, Chief Judge, Dearborn District Court. Travis Reeds, Judge in Novi. Robert Constantine, Dearborn Heights City Council. Paul Cusick, Judge, Wayne County Circuit Court. Our very own Sam Badoon, newly elected Wayne County Commissioner. Don Knapp, Judge, Third Circuit Court. George Duraney, our very own Dearborn City Clerk. The amazing Fadwa Hamoud, our Solicitor General. Mike Mead, our Dearborn Public School Board Trustee. Leslie Herrick, Dearborn City Council. <laughs> you gonna keep that going, Debbie? We got like 20 more. <laughs> Bill Wild, Mayor of Westland. Sam Saleme, Judge, Dearborn District Court. <laughs> Joseph Murray, Fire Chief for City of Dearborn. Mark Plowecki, Judge, 20th District Court. Ivana Abraham, Magistrate, 20th District Court. Mary Lane, Dearborn School of Dearborn School Board Trustee. Mike Serini, uh, President Pro Tem, Dearborn City Council. Rashida Tlaib, 13th District Congresswoman. <laughs> 